Welcome to the first of my new tutorial series, Kerbal 101. While many of us listening to this podcast are veterans of the game, there may still be many newcomers among us looking for help and guidance in where to go in this big solar system. On top of that, there may be many ways of doing or thinking of certain aspects of the game that veteran players may not have explored yet. I hope that these tutorials can be both of these things and potentially more for you guys. Now, sit down and pay attention. Class is in session. For our first topic in Kerbal 101, we're going to talk about some of the big overarching gameplay elements. These being the three game modes and the KSC. The first game mode is Sandbox. In Sandbox mode, there are no gameplay rules and restrictions put on you. You have the full reign of parts with no craft limits placed on you. You can go anywhere at any time and don't have to worry about any goals or progress other than what you deem necessary. These gameplay elements are equal parts strength and weakness. With no rules and restrictions you can be as silly or serious as you want and there's a lot of fun that comes with that. However, if you need a bit more drive to push you forward, you will quickly lose focus in sandbox mode. Sandbox mode is the best mode for someone who's very good at setting their own goals or for practicing with new concepts, mods, or gameplay elements you wish to learn. Next up is science mode. Originally, this mode was called Career, and it's my personal favorite. It's a midpoint between Sandbox and Career. You start with limited parts and must work your way up the tech tree to unlock all of them. You do this by collecting science from the various bodies in the Kerbal system. You aren't restricted in any other way though, so eventually this game turns into Sandbox mode once you max out the tech tree. I recommend Science mode to new players, as it slowly introduces you to parts and gameplay concepts as you go along, but it doesn't hit you with Career mode's funds and contract system which can be very daunting and confusing to a beginner. The final game mode is Career Mode. This game mode is the most dynamic of the three. You must manage your space center through the collection of funds, science, and reputation. You use these different currencies to upgrade your center, build rockets, and unlock the tech tree. This mode restricts you in rocket size, part count, and in many other ways until you upgrade certain pieces of the space center. This mode offers the most to seasoned KSP players as it places the greatest challenge on you as a player. It becomes a bit more than a simple exercise in pointing the rocket towards space. I do not recommend this to beginning players at all, but if you're feeling brave, then the rest of this tutorial will benefit you. Now, on to the Kerbal Space Center. The Space Center is your home base for the game. You manage the entire space program from there. This portion of the tutorial will specifically discuss the different buildings you'll be dealing with. I'll cover the buildings used in all game modes first. The VAB, or Vehicle Assembly Building, is probably the first place most players will go. In the VAB, you generally will be assembling vertically launched vehicles such as rockets. While other things can and will be assembled here, those don't come until later. In career mode, you start with a 30 part limit. The launch pad is the launching space for vehicles created from the VAB. Its only purpose is to be the place where these vehicles take off from. In career mode, it starts with an 18 ton limit, meaning that initial vehicles can only be 30 total parts and 18 tons. While it sounds daunting, it is very possible to launch a vehicle to the moon and back within those limits. We'll get there though. The SPH, or space plane hangar, is where your horizontally launched vehicles are constructed. Planes, space planes, and rovers are typical construction projects for the SPH, although vertical constructions are possible as well. Both the SPH and VAB have the same rules and controls for construction. Also, just like the VAB, you start with a 30 part limit. The runway is the launching space for vehicles created in the space plane hangar. In contrast to the launch pad's mostly identical launches, it greatly affects how your aircraft are launched in career. It starts as a dirt runway full of potholes and is upgraded to a raised tarmac ribbon of perfection as you play. It also begins with an 18 ton limit, meaning that aircraft are also limited to 30 parts and 18 tons. That's enough to get you around the globe though, even though it's fairly difficult to do that with the starting parts. The tracking station is one of the most important buildings in the KSC. It's what gives you the ability to plan all of your maneuvers, manage all active vessels, and find information about bodies in the solar system. In career mode, you start with only being able to see your vessel and lack the ability to create maneuvers. This should be one of your top priorities for early game upgrades. The astronaut complex is where you recruit Kerbals to fill your roster. The Kerbals are randomly generated from time to time and have random stats, specialties, names, and genders. They all perform the same as all other Kerbals in their assigned role, however, and the only difference that the stats make, at least for now, is what faces they make in flight. In career mode, the cost of Kerbonauts rises as you recruit them, and until you upgrade the complex, there's a limit to how many Kerbals you can recruit. The research and development building is important to both science and career mode. It is where you go to see what kinds and how much science you've collected, as well as being where the tech tree can be viewed and unlocked. There are two tabs to facilitate this, the Archive tab and the Research tab, and you can use the information given to help you not waste time accidentally sending repeat missions. It's worth noting that you can use funds to individually purchase access to parts from any tech node you have all the prerequisites researched for. That way you can gain access to much needed technology without waiting. In a future tutorial, I intend to fully cover the research system. For now though, a quick tip for beginners is to take it slow through the tech tree, 
Go layer by layer. This isn't the most efficient way, but it is the best way to learn the various parts. Commission Control is one of two career mode specific buildings. Its function is to provide you contracts and information to make the best of your career. More information can be gathered about the contracts by clicking on the agency name that gives you the contract. Each agency that gives contracts has a unique personality of sorts that gives various bonuses, penalties, and contract types. You start out limited with two active contracts and eventually move up to an unlimited amount of active contracts. Contracts will receive their own tutorial or be bundled in with a more detailed career guide. The administration building is the second career specific building and is one of the most useful buildings in the game. This building allows you to take on strategies that affect how much science, cash, or reputation you gain. Some of these strategies are straight trades, for example, selling science for extra funds, while others are more transformative or convertive in nature, where you can exchange a percentage of all earned science for cash. There are several categories and types of strategies you can implement, and as you upgrade the building you unlock more options and can focus more on specific strategies. Again, this will get covered more thoroughly in a career guide. This concludes our first lesson of Kerbal 101. From now on, we'll be dealing with one topic at a time. Something that has been popular of late is discussing the most efficient launch profiles. So, in next week's tutorial, we'll be covering launch profiles for beginners. As I mentioned earlier, I posted all of my previous tutorials on my YouTube channel, Gaming Psychologist. Just search for it on the channel page. The Gaming Psychologist was already taken, so it's just Gaming Psychologist. I hope those continue to help you guys continue to improve your mining abilities, and the series will return at a later date. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at JMA4707 or watch my streams at twitch.tv slash jarthur4707. I stream regular KSP content on Monday nights and other random stuff throughout the week. Until next time, J. Arthur, signing off.